I'm down to, you know, do whatever it takes. Cool. Yeah, so. How down are you? Don't you fucking give up right now. <sighs> Fuck. You're not gonna like me at certain times, and I'm not here to be your friend. Do not touch the ground. Do not be a little bitch. Dude, what the fuck? Maybe it is just better jacking off at home and having fun. You guys are gonna get fucked up today. I feel like I'm gonna vomit. Feel that same power at 100%! Got a little boogie on the left oh, side. Oh, thank you, thank you. Which side, this side? Oh. Yeah, it's gone now. Thank you, we're good. Right, go. Thanks, buddy. So it's been a rough couple of years. Um, you know, the more I work from home, the more I see my productivity dwindle. I'm going nowhere fast. And if I am to become a better man, it's time to master the art of productivity. Maybe it's not an art, but just the, the practice of productivity. I'm going to attend a men's work course. So in order to improve on my productivity skills, I've enrolled in a course with a man named Ken Conklin, who's part of a group of businessmen. They execute a series of daily protocols that weaponize ourselves through the men's certainty, power, and discipline to perform in an environment and put numbers on the board no matter the conditions set for us. Ken's brand of no-nonsense intensity was certainly scary for me. But as they say, real progress starts where your comfort zone ends. Let's conduct some business, man. Even though he's only 24 years old, Ken leaves no time for play. In addition to leading this course, he's also a house sitter, and I met him at his latest assignment. Hi, Ken. Well, howdy. I'm Taji. I'm Ken. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. Ken then took me for a tour of this very tall house. And once we made it to the top, Ken explained to me how he could take my productivity to the top as well. Our whole mission is to help set the tone for the next generation by creating strong, honorable, and high-value businessmen. What I'm going to be doing with you today is I'm going to help you find what your core motivations are and find a way to use them to your advantage and basically weaponize yourself with that certainty to show up in any situation or environment and just go. As long as you give me your full commitment, I'll help you access that ability to be more productive, disciplined, and all that. You in? Thank you, Ken. All right, let's do it. I have some gentlemen I want you to meet. These are the participants that'll be joining us in today's experience. Yo. Awesome. Motley crew. Well, cool. Well, I have this shirt for you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you a quick little breakdown of just what we're all about at Gravel to Castle so you have an understanding of why I'm going to have you do some of the things that you're going to do today. You're going to get uncomfortable. You're not going to like me at certain times. And I'm not here to be your friend. Most men are stuck in a state of apathy that gets them stuck from being that greater version of themselves. And if any of you guys have seen Batman Begins, Right? Bruce Wayne's on the plane talking about most people need dramatic examples to shake them out of apathy. That's what today is. You guys are gonna get fucked up today. I guess I was right to fear this insanely productive man. Uh, real quick, Taj. Yes. Um, you like presents? Uh, yeah, of course. Cool. I'm not here to give you any presents today. Okay. Yeah. But I am here to give you a reward if you graduate from today. This right here is my life's work. I'm 24 years old, I have a long ways to go. But I give my heart and soul to everything that I do and everything in this book, I genuinely believe that will be a great benefit for you. And I'm not gonna give it to you unless you graduate from today. After Ken's rousing speech, we all headed up to the roof to do some exercises. The purpose of this exercise is I wanna get a good understanding of where you guys are at physically but then also mentally. So get into plank position. We're starting in five, four, three, two, one, go. God damn. So Tosh, tell me something. How are your relationships with your family? Positive for the most part, definitely. Yeah? Yes. So you guys are just gonna be holding this for a little while. This is gonna be a reward for the person that holds it the longest but there's also gonna be a consequence for the person that falls first. Let's have some fun. But I want you guys to recognize that fun is an acronym. Frequent Uncomfortable Necessities. 
It's not leisure. Do not touch the ground. Do not be a little bitch. One of the things that we talk about here at Gravel Castle is a lot of men struggle. I can't do it anymore. Sorry, I fucked okay. up. All right. <laughs> I'm going to need you to do 50 burpees, okay? And I want you to count out loud because you yeah, yeah. need to be held accountable. One. Two. Three. I was just beginning my day with Ken, and I was having lots of fun. His version of fun, that is. These burpees certainly were uncomfortable. I can't hear you, bud. 13. 13, let's go, come on, 14. But were they necessities? I couldn't understand how sweating on this roof would help me stay off my phone. Did you get to 50 yet? Keep going. But as tired as I was, I wanted to truly commit to the process and allow Ken to take me from the gravel to hopefully the castle. 50. Right. Let's give a quick round of applause. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna vomit. I like all the sweat. Yes, sir. I can tell you're pushing yourself right now. Ugh. Right. So, I want you guys to get in that same plank position. This time, put on some blindfolds. Where is it? It's it's. I go in the theater. theater. standing. Yeah. The duffel bag. The duffel bag. There's uh, blindfolds. Okay. Clear plastic bag. It's like this big. Yeah. Can you grab that real quick? Right. Thanks. We're gonna switch things up a little bit. All right. Get in the plank position. <sighs> There's gonna be a very brutal punishment, not for the person that gives in first, but for the person, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's gonna be a very brutal punishment for not the person that gives in first, but for every single person else. And we will all be very aware of who that person is that decided to give in. So don't be that asshole that punishes your entire team. Taj, I don't want you going in. Come on, let's go. Hold it, hold it, don't give in. Would anyone like a little bit of water to cool down? Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm down. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Nice. I think Cam needs some more yeah. syrup. Now, notice how you motherfuckers asked me to spray you, but now you're slipping. That didn't really serve you too well, did it? Go. All right. And that's it. Cool. Anthony gave in first. Everyone take off your blindfold. Anthony, keep yours on. So I want everyone to look at Anthony right now. Which one's Anthony? Sorry, I forget. Blue hair. Blue hair. Blue, is it blue or green? Both. Both. So Anthony, what I want you to recognize from this moment right now is you failing to accomplish the task at hand. It's not just you that suffers, it's everyone else. Now these guys are gonna be physically in pain because you fell first. Yeah. Keep that thought process in your mind. Okay, we're gonna go for a little field trip. Let's all make our way downstairs. Next, we packed up the van in preparation for our field trip to an undisclosed location. We'll load up all the sandbags right here. It's fucking heavy. Sandbags, let's go. Come on, guys, hurry. You want to get these ropes in too or not yet? Please. Oh, is that the last sandbag. one? Sandbag, let's go. Sandbag, let's go. Do we have the cooler? The cooler. Cool. Hey, I'm noticing you're um, taking charge of getting everything ready, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you of course, that. thank you. Blindfolds, let's go. Imagine if you were gonna go on a little road trip and imagine if you were the one driving. <laughs> Dude, that would be fucking terrifying. You know why? Because I'm blindfolded? Yeah. That's like how you're going about your life right now. And my diagnosis is we need to start taking off that blindfold. Not literally, metaphorically. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. So Ken, where did it all begin for you? Um, when I was 18, you know, we all have our heartbreaks. I had mine, but then also uh, my grandfather just passed away in the same month. And then my stepmom, who was married to my dad, she left him and uh, married his best friend. And I was pissed and that just left a lot of anger in my life. And so I always wanted to uh, push myself and try to be successful. Um, but I'm kind of wanting to be that role model for that 18 year old version of me. I felt lost, suicidal, and just fucking broken down. And I know there's so many men out there that feel that same way. Sure. And where does the whole, like, um, being a man come into play here? Because I know we're all men right here, and, yeah. you know, it seems like from seeing the videos, you know, it's like a lot of, you know, tapping into your manliness. So power is not something that a man can be given. Every man needs a code to live by. I've got my brother's back, and he's got mine. I call it being strong, honorable, and high value. But your power kind of as a man, right? Not as yeah, like totally, a yeah. human. Like no, 100%, it's, it's specifically for men. A big influence for me has been Batman Begins.
Whoa. All right, follow me, guys. I wasn't really sure where we were or where we were even going, but I guess that was all part of Ken's grand master plan for us. And even though carrying the sandbag was a tremendous pain in the ass, yeah, this sandbag is a tremendous pain in the ass, the walk gave me time to connect with my fellow Gravel to Castle brothers. So what was your life like before you joined the Gravel to Castle? I felt like I was being stagnant, you know? And uh, I wanted to go through this program because I want to really like accelerate my career. Be better with finances, my life, my family, be better with them. I feel like it's all there, but I'm not taking enough action, you know? If action was what my new friend wanted, he had certainly come to the right place. So, Anthony, you remember how you gave in first, right? And I yeah. told you that there'd be a consequence for everyone else. Now these guys are gonna be physically in pain because you fell first. So everyone needs to grab their sandbags. So do I not grab a bag? Yeah, you're gonna watch. And now everyone remember that Anthony is the reason you're doing this. Sandbag above your head and follow me. Just don't let that bag touch the ground. Got a little boogie on the left oh, side. Oh, thank you, thank you. Which side, this side? Yeah, it's gone now. Thank you, good. Go. Thanks, buddy. Hold the bag to your chest. Hold it in a squat position. Yeah. Count out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, yours is leaking, buddy. So there appears to be some like technical difficulties right now with the sandbags and just the way that this sack holds in the sand. But what's funny about this too is that the bigger the hole in the sandbag, the like easier it is on us. But uh, probably more angry Ken gets throughout, so. I'm hearing everything you're saying, by the way. I thought you were occupied with the sandbags, but I guess not. Um, you guys got this. Looks like you guys struggled a bit. Yeah, like Sorry it. to put you guys through that. So I want all of us to real quick take a second to look at how this can be a metaphor in our lives where we didn't complete the task at hand that then affected something else. I guess like just kind of missing out on doing certain things, just sitting on the couch, like either on my phone or smoking weed or watching TV, like a lot of my time. Did you have any friends that were involved in anything that you were like, hey, I'm gonna sit this out or I'm just gonna Yeah, relax. for sure, like events, you know, all sorts of things. Just, you know, sitting at home, smoking okay. weed on my couch. And those events could have been Pretty good experiences for you, huh? Probably. I think the biggest takeaway from what I just heard is not having it easy. I think a lot of us in areas of our lives are looking for that easy path. But how does that make you feel? I think, you know, learning how to push myself past my limits, even when I don't want to, could be a very meaningful experience. We all have that purpose, and we need to not give up our other obligations just because, hey, this life as a pig is actually pretty nice. Rolling around and filth and you know just laying the sun and all that stuff mm -hmm. sounds cool but dude you ain't a pig you're a fucking king yeah word Love sick it. i try to mix it up with these guys and hopefully they're having some decent takeaways this is what happens when your bag breaks <laughs> holy fuck for our final activity at the park we all had to hike to the top of a hill while carrying our sandbags but once again they were causing us issues. Notice how there's no one else out here lifting sandbags. What are they doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thanks. What a finish song. Okay, grab your pens, guys. We're on each other's back if you need to. Um, this is an awesome framework for kind of breaking down what it is you're trying to accomplish and reverse engineering the major pivotal steps that is required to reach that goal. Everyone in this group was truly unique and their goals were too. I would really like financial freedom. To be specific, I wanted to lose 10 pounds and be in better shape. Just to master the art of discipline and uh, basically just become my best person possible. Um, via productivity. And no one was without obstacles that stood in their way. The dangers are drugs, alcohol, fear of missing out. I could lose money. Fear of judgment and fearing of myself. I guess like kind of having like a slightly bad back at times. Bad back? Literally and metaphorically. But as different as we were, Ken had clearly inspired us all. Once you could build discipline around your physical stuff, I feel like everything else just becomes a lot easier. It's about having the plan, sticking to it, 
you know, doing what you got to do, whether you feel like it or not. Love it. All right, let's empty those bags. And as we emptied our sandbags, I felt like I was emptying the sandbag of my life, filled to the brim with counterproductive habits that I had held on to for far too long. And even though I felt like I was making progress, I still had a long way to go on my journey to the castle. If you like getting your ass kicked, I suggest you come here. So we headed back to base camp to dive deeper into the curriculum. This binder is yours to keep. I want you to be Thank able you to so much. go through it's it. Super nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Where do you come up with all of the terms? Are they like, yeah. I see a cold shower contract? Like, like People can say, yeah, I'm going to take cold showers, but they don't. Well, when they sign a contract, they're less likely to break that commitment. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe we go and, over a few more terms yeah, in yeah. here. Um, pass the puck. What's that one all about? That one's definitely about uh, delegating and whatnot. What is a net promoter score? This whole thing is just all about looking at your end-of-week assessment. It's called the Pomodoro effect. I'm jacking off three times a day. Negative experience reframing. I feel like a weirdo. I suck with women. My time is going by quickly. Maybe it is just better jacking off at home and having fun. It makes sense. My goal is to have a bunch of incredible trainers that have all these areas of expertise. I'd love to have someone that served in the Navy or was a Navy SEAL or some badass military person. Do people compare you guys to the Navy SEALs? If anything, we're more like Batman Begins than the military. So in a way, you are the Batman? I think so. Who's I'm Robin? <laughs> Now that I had learned some of the key language of gravel to castle, isn't this a term that's in like Scientology a lot though? Ken took me to the beach to complete my final and most intense challenge. Taj, I hope we've had a fun experience so far. We're gonna finish up here at the beach right now. For this last part, you and I are gonna get a little intimate and I wanna really push you. Are you cool with that? Yes, sir. We're gonna go in the water right now. Alrighty, let's get it. Like inside of the water. Yep, I want you to just simply Walk in this water right now and lay down, get fully submerged. Don't get out until I say so, okay? Okay. It's so cold. Yep. Come over here. Holy fuck, that's cold. Okay, start doing some push ups. I want you to do as many push ups as you physically can. Come on, let's go. Go, get in the water, lay down. All right, push ups right now. Come on. Let's go! Pull, oh, get in the water. Brace the water. 48, let's go. Come on, 49, go, let's go, 50. All right, lay in the water. Feel it, enjoy it. Cool, right here is where you're gonna dig a grave. My goal with having you dig this grave is for you to tap into the mental state that life is very short. As you're digging this hole, I want you to share some of the things that you're not doing right now that you need to start doing. Just be healthier and smoke less weed. Why? Um, to live longer and better. As I continued digging my own grave, Ken got me to open up further about the things that I wished I was doing differently in my life. You know the feeling you're just wondering what's on your phone, you're like not even looking at it? That's a pretty bad feeling, I think. That means you're addicted to your phone. Certainly. I'm like nice to everyone, you know? <sighs> but... I feel like sometimes that can not even help people, you know, if you're too nice. Also knowing when to call it quits on certain things and not dragging things out. Not just my relationships, but everything else, you know? Yeah. Try to lay your whole body in. Got a little present for you. Put your head up. All right, Taj. I want you to imagine right now that you're fucking dead. All those relationships that you care deeply about, you no longer have those. What are your thoughts going through your mind? Who's gonna miss you? All of my family, my mom, my dad. Um, what are they gonna be saying? Probably that it's fucked up that they're gonna outlive me. That's a pretty sad thought. How are some of the things you're doing in your life right now or not doing possibly leading towards that end result, that reality? I would guess just like being reckless with things, you know? You told me that you smoke a good amount of weed. Is yes, that correct? Certainly. How is that for your health? Definitely bad for your health. So what I want you to imagine is right now, you're reflecting on your life, you've passed away, and you're thinking about these things that you wish that you would have done or that you could have changed 
I'm giving you that power to tap into those emotions and thoughts to have you show up differently. If you were in your last final moments and you had one person that you could leave a message to, who would that person be? My mom. What would you want to tell your mom in your final moments? Obviously that I love her and that I'm appreciative for everything that she has done for me. And uh, that I just want her to be happy no matter what. I want you to think about you accessing 10% of your human power right now. Feel that same power, but now at 20%. Feel it? Yes. Feel that same power at 50%. Feel that same power at 100%! Now I want you to run straight into that ocean, but feeling that 100% power. Yes. And everything we just talked about, I want you to make that your intention with this new person that you're stepping into. All right, let's go, come on, let's go. To the ocean, let's go. Let me know how it feels. Josh, come here. Thank you, man. Thank you. You feel good? Yeah. Woo. Dude, call your mom tonight. Let her know how you're feeling. Yeah. Will you do that? Of course, thank you and I'll try to be more productive with everything I do. Boom. I hope so. Because I see a lot in you. I see a lot in all of us, right? Yes. Everyone that will participate in today's experience, yeah. we all have more capacity that we can access yeah. to. Myself included. For sure. Whew. Does anyone have a fucking towel or no? Well, it certainly wasn't easy, but I finally made it to the castle. Through Ken's wild methods, he made his point loud and clear. Life is short, and when I look back, I want to be able to say that I lived my life to the fullest potential. And whether I do that by taking a cold shower every day, or just by spending less time on my phone, I want to be more intentional with how I spend my life from here on out. So I want to thank you, Ken, for helping me get one step closer to becoming a better man. Hey, Mom. Oh, hey, Tashi. I just called to tell you that I love you, and I just want you to be happy, no matter what. Oh, I love you too, son. We're gonna do some tug of war. You guys need to get the tip of your rope over this line. Go. <laughs> go! No! <laughs> oh, no! Had to run on that one. Remember, non-conditional man, ready to go any second. So I lost, I guess? Yeah. No. All right. Well, that didn't work out so good for me.